اوكي هلا احنا المحاضره الماضيه حكينا عن السلفوناميدز في حدا بيتذكر وير از ذا ستراكشر اكتيفيتي ريليشن شيب بالسلفوناميدز let me present to you for instance those examples of sulfonamides what are the structural features of pharmacophore for sulfonamides yes exactly you have or we have to have let's say this aniline part present in the structure okay هلا the amine must be free وهلا رح نشوف بالاخر few slides رح نحكي عنهم بالسلفونامدز انه if you will attach anything to that nitrogen if it's not biodegradable or in other words if cannot be removed in vivo معناها انه this compound will be have or, or will have a diminished activity ف um, if you will attach anything to that nitrogen يعني it must be free for the compound to bind to its target but if it is if there is anything to be Uh, bound to this nitrogen, it must be something that can be removed in vivo, or in other words, in a, as in a, in a pro-drug form, okay? It's sulfonamide group, it can para in terms of substitution uh, position relative to the amino group, okay? And as you can see, what we change in sulfonamides is one of the substituents that can be found in nitrogen. At least I need to have one proton in here or one hydrogen in here so that the compound will be ionizable to form much stronger binding interactions with the enzyme target or the target enzyme. Generally speaking, the substitutions that will be present on nitrogen of the sulfonamide must be electron with a drone. Okay? In the previous lecture, we discussed examples on it and compared to the different Uh, substitutions او الالكترون وذ دروينج رينج سيستمز اللي ممكن تكون موجوده عندي على النيتروجين وكيف انا ممكن احدد اياها بتر الكترون وذ دروينج جروب اند سو اون اوكي اخر شيء بدنا نحكي عنه اللي هي ذا ابيليتي اوف جنريتنج برو دراجز اوت اوف ذوز سلفونامدز اوكي ويوجوالي وات ايفر از تو بي اتاتش تو ذوز سلفونامدز تو جنريت اي برو دراج حتى اغير انا من الفارماكوكينيتك بروبرتيز فور ات مش البايندنج افينيتي لانه بالنهايه لازم هاي تكون النيتروجين فري اوكي هلا ذات جروب ماست بي ريموفد ان فيفو او ان اذر ووردز وات ايفر اي ويل اتاتش تو ات لازم اضمن او لازم اكون عارفه انه اوريدي هاي الجروب ممكن انها تنشال بسهوله ان فيفو اوكي ون اوف ذا فيري ميجر Uh, a moiety that can be attached to that nitrogen in the form of an acyl a group, okay? That acyl, which will form an amide group in here, as you all know, that amide can be hydrolyzed in vivo, okay? Or if not hydrolyzed, our rate of hydrolysis becomes قليل في the point of it, which is حتى إنه يكون الإفكت local زي ما رح نشوف later on, okay? طيب هلا if you would mask that amino group uh, in the form of an amide. Would this increase or decrease the lipophilicity? What do you think? If you would attach an acyl group, يعني a carbonyl, and whatever, let's say, attached to a carbonyl, would you expect in the lipophilicity بتزيد ولا بتقل? بتزيد في حال إذا كانت عندي, let's say, The chain or whatever is attached to the acyl lipophilic in nature. Okay, the can lipophilic in nature, مثلا, methyl, ethyl, whatever, a phenyl group, definitely lipophilicity بتزيد, generally speaking. هلا بتزيد لأنه, to begin with, the alkyl groups are lipophilic in nature, or add to that, إنه لما أحول أنا الأمين into the form of an amide, أنا عم بقلل من the number of hydrogen bonds that that nitrogen can form. Okay, with water. Okay? لكن the nature of whatever is attached to the acyl هي اللي بحدد. طيب. Another group that can be or another let's say modification of that nitrogen is in the form of this group. What do we call it? Azo. Yeah, that's an azo group. Okay. Or in some cases you may they may refer to it as a diazine. هلا that azo or diazine group. Okay. If, oh, as you all know, يعني the first the first sulfonamide, اللي هو السلفانيلامide, was discovered in it was in the form of an azo compound. Okay, it was attached via an azo group to another uh, uh, part or another compound. 
Um, it's definitely a pro-drug. This compound cannot bind to its target enzyme in its form. Okay. Well, what do you think we consider a reaction or the metabolism that needs to happen on a high group until eventually you give me the free amino group? No, hydrolysis includes that you know, water will react with that group. And these are the two nitrogens that were attached in the form of an azo reduction. Exactly. So when you add hydrogens or hydrides to them, you are definitely reducing it. So um, this, I will, this reduction may happen, uh, um, let's say, in vivo via metabolizing enzymes in the liver. And even in the gut or in the GIT system, the uh, normal flora, or the bacteria هناك, they have the ability to reduce that as a group into the corresponding, let's say, free amino groups. Okay? This drug, our sulfasalazine, is used for treating the Crohn's disease, which is mostly the inflammation of the GIT. The one that is responsible for treating the inflammation in Crohn's disease is actually this compound. It's not sulfapyridine. Look at those prodrugs, succinyl, sulfathiazole, or benzoyl, or this, let's say, benzoyl prodrugs in general. But another issue the group that can be put on sulfonamide nitrogen. It's succinyl sulfathiazole. Okay, this nitrogen is in the form of an amide. This group in here is what? That's a carboxylate. Already, it is a drone being ionized. We know that the PKA of carboxylic acids around four for something. It depends on the media around it, which means in how it will be ionized at physiological pH. That is why it's drawn in the form of a salt. Okay? This drug is used for treatment of gut infections. Why it was designed in this form? Because when I add, let's say, a carboxylic acid or this prodrug in the form of a carboxylic acid, it means that compound increased the polarity or decreased it? Decreased it. Okay? الووتر سوليبيليتي زدتها كمان بشكل كبير هلا بتتوقعوا السكسينايل سلفاثايازول ابزوربشن ثرو ذا ثرو ليتس سي ذا جي اي تي ريلاتيف تو سلفاثايازول مين افضل او الابزوربشن له الريت والاكستنت اوف ابزوربشن راح يكون احسن للسلفاثايازول ولا للسكسينايل سلفاثايازول للسلفاثايازول اوكي ذات از واي ذس Pro drug was designed to be out to treat, let's say, out for local treatment of uh, uh, GIT infections. Let know in this form, rahikun il absorption, okay, uh, uh, as a rate to extent, قليل جدا, okay, rahikun il absorption to the bacteria that is in the cause of the infection, rahikun asra wa akthar, yani bimana akhar distribution rahikun akthar, bil bacteria al mojuda fil gut, or pathogenic bacteria al mojuda fil gut relative to be, or for being, let's say, absorbed in the system. Okay? Same thing if you would attach something that is very lipophilic, such as formation of benzoyl prodrugs out of whatever sulfonamide you have. This will highly increase the lipophilicity. Those will form aggregates. Bardo kaman al absorption la ilham rahi koon aqal min the free amine forms of those drugs. But bardo kaman these are used for treating locally the gut infections. Okay. And when you make drugs very polar or highly, let's say, water soluble or even highly lipid soluble, both, let's say, will have decreased absorption rate and extent versus the parent drug. نحكي هلا عن another drug لكن still we are inhibiting the same uh, pathway for folate synthesis واللي هو لترايميثوبرم هلا recall حكينا انه البكتيريا does not uptake the folic acid out of the diet it must synthesize it and if you recall حكينا عن انه uh, it uses dihydropteroic acid all the way to synthesize the dihydrofolic acid with dihydrofolic acid is later converted into tetrahydrofolic acid okay which is a carbon source for synthesis of thiamine على سبيل المثال واللي هي one of the very important building blocks in DNA synthesis okay هلا an enzyme that will reduce the dihydrofolic acid into tetrahydrofolic acid what is its name 
dihydrofolate reductase. The trimethoprim, which has this structure, is an inhibitor of this enzyme. When we have this enzyme before? بالضبط اللي هو do you remember its structure أو the name of that drug المثوتركسيت okay تمام طيب بمعنى إنه we have this enzyme already right the trimethoprim this one in here inhibits the dihydrofolate reductase which means إنه أنا إذا بدي أستخدمه for bacteria and it would bind to the dihydrofolate reductase in our cells it would be very toxic right how can you explain that? How can you explain the safety of trimethoprim versus a methotrexate? Trimethoprim is not used as an anti-cancer. It's used for treating bacterial infections. بيشتغل بنفس الطريقة اللي بيشتغل فيها المثوتركسيت. لا. Do you have, let's say, an explanation for that? The safety of trimethoprim. Versus in methotrexate. هلا صح إحنا بنحكي عن نفس الإنزيم in bacteria in our cells. The dihydrofolate reductase. بالضبط. The dihydrofolate reductase. The same name in bacteria versus the one that we have in our cells. They do the same function. They do inhibit the dihydrofolate into the tetrahydrofolate. لكن those two enzymes, the bacterial, let's say isoform, the human isoform, they are different. يعني الـ active site في there are variations الـ, الـ, الـ amino acids اللي بتكون موجودة بهاي الـ, الـ, الـ active sites of those let's say two isoforms of the same enzyme اللي هو الـ dihydrofolate reductase different فعشان هيك الـ binding affinity for الـ trimethoprim يعني its structure fits الـ active site of the bacterial الـ trimethoprim of the bacterial dihydrofolate reductase بشكل كثير أفضل من الـ humans all right. The affinity, yes. Yeah. لا هل ال ال point إنه يعني هي عشان بس سك so that you you يعني you understand the safety behind the trimethoprim إنه صح هل ال bacterial cells و our cells we both have the dihydrofolate reductase ال ال same هو ال name هو نفسه تمام the function of this enzyme is the same لكن those two enzymes لو أنا بدي أطلع على the overall structure for them بيختلف the active site for the bacterial dihydrofolate reductase with the human dihydrofolate reductase في اختلافات بسيطة يعني في some enzymes as في some amino acids بتكون متشابهة داخل the active site لكن في عندي other amino acids different that is why the binding affinity of a trimethoprim to the bacterial dihydrofolate reductase تقريبا 100,000 times versus that of humans يعني حتى لو بيدخل بداخل ال in our cells it will not bind to the human dihydrofolate reductase that is why it's a safe relative مثلا to methotrexate okay the reason is the variations in the active site of human versus bacterial dihydrofolate reductase هاي ال variations هي اللي بتخلي ال trimethoprim يرتبط selectively بال bacterial dihydrofolate reductase لكن ما بيرتبط بالhuman dihydrofolate reductase okay its structure fits better the bacterial dihydrofolate reductase وضحت يعني still احنا بنحكي عن نفس الانزيم كفنكشن وكنيم لكن that of bacteria is different than that of humans هاي ال variations هي اللي بتخلي ال trimethoprim فقط يرتبط بال bacterial او بيرتبط selectively بال bacterial dihydrofolate reductase يعني إن إحنا بنحكي عن selectivity variation بتوصل تقريبا ل 100,000 times. 
okay? That, that's a huge difference in selectivity or binding affinity. Okay? Hala, since the trimethylbrem, they use the sulfonamides, they act on the same pathway, which is eventually the synthesis of tetrahydrofolic acid. That is why if they are used simultaneously or in combination, they will act synergistically. Okay? Um, which means, in, uh, I can, if used in combination, I can use both the drugs in lower doses. Then, you know, eventually, we are targeting the same pathway, which is the eventually the synthesis of tetrahydrofolic acid. Hello, موجود عندكم بالسلايدز إنه you know, what is the ratio between the trimethylbrem with the sulfonamides? Hi, أنا مش راح أسألكوا عنها. Definitely, بتاخدوها ب other courses. Okay. إحنا فقط what matters to us is, is to understand where or which targets those drugs bind to and uh, uh, what pathway they do inhibit. Still, we are talking about synthetic antibacterials, but we're talking about a completely different drug class, which are the quinolones. Okay? Now, يعني similar to sulfonamides, by the way. هلا لبس تشوفوا the structure activity relationship. راح تشوفوا إنه تقريبا the pharmacophore هو the same. The variations اللي بتصير أو the substitutions المختلفة راح نشوف كيف بتأثر على the activity, على the the let's say potency, the pharmacokinetic properties and all that. For somehow, يعني somehow the SAR is very nice for those drugs. So we will look into the crystal structure حتى هيك يعني نوصل ل point إنكم تكونوا فاهمين. مش بس حافظين انه هاي التشينجز ليش ممكن تخلي هالاكتيفيتي تزيد او تقل او انها تماما يصير للدرج ان اكتيف هلا when we say quinolone okay those or this class of a drug structurally definitely راح يشبه كينولين that's a ring يفترض تكونوا حافظين اسمها والستراكشر لها تماما alright هلا the pharmacophore for the quinolones or this antibacterial class of a drug اللي هي the three or the n-alkylated three carboxy let's say pyridinone or um uh, or pyridine four on تمام هلا the numbering بال quinolone دائما 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 starts from a nitrogen okay هلا why we say three carboxy because if this is one Two and three because we have a carboxylic group on carbon number three. This ring in here looks like what? El pyridine. All right. We may know I have a ketone at carbon number four. That is why it's pyridine for on or for pyridone. تمام؟ أكيد مش مش مطلوب منكم تحفظوا the exact IUPAC name for such a ring system. But I need at least to understand, you know. Um, um, let's say this IUPAC name represents or shows you the pharmacophore for the uh, quinolones. Usually, this ring is attached to another aryl ring, it could be pyridine, it could be benzene, and so on. The first quinolone that was used as an antibacterial agent is this one that is shown in here, which is nalidexic acid. And nalidexic acid, by the way, we call a first-generation quinolone. Right, its spectrum of activity was very narrow. The uses for it was were very limited. رح نحكي later ليش وإيش الchanges اللي عملوها later on حتى إنهم يزيدوا من the spectrum of activity with potency. All right, but you just need to understand in in alidexic acid with later generations of quinolones, all of them they have this pharmacophore which is highlighted in blue and red. Okay. And norfloxacine is a later generation of uh, quinolones which have a very OA broad spectrum of activity. خلينا نشوف um, before we look into the crystal structure. Um, um, if you compare an alidexic acid with norfloxacine, إيش في هيك substitutions uh, um, that are خلينا نحكي تعتبر hallmarks لهاي later generations. برأيكم؟ Yes, and we have a floor at this position, okay, which is, yeah, this ring in here, I will peprazine, we later on, we'll see that in almost all later generations, we do have uh, an N or a nitrogen-containing, let's say, saturated 
uh, cyclic structures that are attached to carbon number seven. طيب. هلا أنا uh, عملت upload لل, على ال e-learning لل mechanism of action of fluoroquinolones. حدا منكم شاف الفيديو؟ طيب. Um, I highly recommend it. Um, مش راح أدخل بتفاصيل ال mechanism of action. يعني this is um, يعني بالنهاية لو مثلا بدنا نسأل عنها ف... يعني definitely أنتم بتاخذوها بالفارماكولوجي بشكل موسع. Um, ف um, So that is why I mean, you, you have the video to explain it for you. Fashanik, I will not spend a lot of time explaining that. All you need to know is that chlorokinolones or kinolones in general, they bind to DNA gyrase or topoisomerase 4 in, in, uh, uh, in bacteria. With topoisomerase as an enzyme, when did we before? Bil anti cancers, in particular, the drugs that do bind or inhibit or poison in. Uh, yep. Yep, we'll come to them. Okay, those two, let's say, drugs where, uh, uh, in particular, those non in non intercalating anti cancers, they actually were poisons for these um, uh, or such an enzyme. طب هل enzyme تذكر إيش كان يعمل؟ Exactly. Right. So, if fluoroquinolones or quinolones, they target the um, topoisomerase for or um, the DNA gyrase will مقابل topoisomerase one in bacteria. تمام. Very similar to what those non-intercalating such as the etoposide will come to thesin do. They bind to the complex of the DNA with this enzyme. Uh, those enzymes act in the same manner. They alleviate any stress in their structures during replication and transcription. Uh, and they do stabilize the, the broken DNA. And if you would look at this crystal structure of um, uh, DNA gyrase with the um, um, a quinolone or one of the fluoroquinolones and it was suprafluxacine, okay? The one that is highlighted or colored in orange represents a DNA, and the one in blue represents a DNA gyrase. All right. ولاحظوا إنه أنا بيكون في عندي أو these green let's say structures in here represents the drug. ولاحظوا إنه أنا بيكون في عندي breaks بال DNA. يعني هي if you would tilt the structure, you will see إنه في أنا عندي breaks بال DNA. Very similar to the etoposide with tinoposide. These drugs bind to the DNA, DNA, or DNA, and DNA gyrase complexes, stabilizes these complexes, prevent the enzyme from re-ligating the broken DNA. The net result of those fluoroquinolones in whom they will eventually lead to breaks in DNA. So, بناء عليها, the fluoroquinolones, بعتبرهم bacteriostatic or bactericidal, بما انهم eventually بيعملوا breaks بالDNA. Sidal. Sidal. They actually considered bactericidal. Okay. طيب. Let me show you a crystal structure of this drug. The interactions اللي بيعملها. And then we will consider the structure activity relationship. Okay. Hala, overall, this part in quinolones or fluoroquinolones is considered, or the one that is highlighted in red, is considered the pharmacophore. In other words, nothing needs to be changed. 
any change in the structure of that pharmacophore, so it can be ketone, the carboxylic acid, the double bond, the nitrogen, any change on those structural features of this pharmacophore will diminish the activity. Okay? The other things is that I need to have, for those that need to have a, 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 um, a wide range of a spectrum of activity, I need to have a uh, fluorine in particular on carbon number six. This usually affects a cell wall penetration. That is why the spectrum was widened when they added the fluorine at position number six. For position number seven, those substitutions usually also increase the spectrum of activity, but command a binding affinity. Okay, a substitution on that nitrogen also affects the potency, the binding affinity, which ultimately increased part of the spectrum of activity. Okay, Hala. before we talk about in the specifications for the structure activity relationship, خليني بس أفرجيكم the crystal structure or based on that, we will be considering the important of why the, the part that is highlighted in red are the three carboxy uh, pyridone or four pyridone is very important for activity. Now, this is a crystal structure you see represents the DNA gyrase bound to ciprofloxacin. Okay, those two units really highlighted in green and orange, this represents the monomers of this dimer. The one, I mean, here, to tilt it in this manner. You see this part in here? This ribbon in here with all of those, let's say, cyclic structures in between or in the center, this represents what? The DNA, okay? So this is a drug, a ciprofloxacin, binds to DNA gyrase when bound to DNA, stabilizing the broken DNA or stabilizing such a complex. But the amyl hella highlight on the structure of this drug. على أساس نشوف إيش الانتراكشنز اللي عاملها and explain why the pharmacophore أو the three carboxy pyridone is the pharmacophoric part of this drug. Okay, so that's the ligand. Let me tilt it. All right, so that's the, oh, this ring in here is the three carboxy peridone. Here's the nitrogen with the alkyl group which is what? What is this alkyl group that is attached to the nitrogen? It's a cyclic structure composed of how many atoms? Three, which we were in a cyclic cyclopropane or as a substituent, we say cyclopropyl. This is nitrogen one, this is carbon two, okay? Well, this is carbon three. Ish mojud indi ala carbon number three? A carboxylic acid, tamam? Type carbon number four, a ketone, all right? Or a carbonyl. And for sure, this is the fused ring that is attached to this pharmacophoric feature. Ala carbon number seven, as for six. Le fluor, or carbon number seven, let me tilt it again. Ish fi indi? Epiprazine. Tamam? All right. Can you show the interactions? What do you think this purple here represents what? No. Tala'u tahit. 
تحت بيكون look at the let's say box at the 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 bottom of the page. إيش مكتوب؟ Manganese. All right. So manganese is a very important let's say transition metal, very important for the catalysis of this enzyme that is present in the active site of this DNA gyrase. Okay. هلا if I would click على ال ال legend it will show us the interactions that it's forming. مين اللي عامل interaction مع هاي المنجنيز؟ بالضبط. The two oxygens, the ketone, will carboxylic acid. All right. طيب. What is the hybridization of the carboxylic acid carbon? معلش إنه شوي مزعج. Rotation here. SP, look at your notes. SP2, both carbons, ولا بس واحدة منهم? Yeah, the carboxylic acid carbon, the hybridization لإلها, SP2. طب الأكسجينز, إيش الهايبريدايزيشن لإلهم? برضو كمان SP2. All of them are SP2 hybridized. What is the geometry around those atoms? plan كل الاتاتشمنتس يعني الاكسجينز والكربون كل الاتاتشمنتس اللي حواليهم راح يكونوا على نفس البلين خليني اشيل هاي الانتراكشنز وافرجيكم ثواني بس معلش الجيومتري اراوند ات طيب الكيتون كاربون والاكسجين ايش الهايبريدايزيشن لهم كمان اس بي 2 الجيومتري اراوند ذيم لا I want to tilt it to the side. بس بدي كنت بدي أفرجيكم إنه كيف بتكون عندي كل هاي ال atoms كل ياتهم على نفس the plane, which is the perfect geometry for those functionalities. Okay, in them. Okay, fine. So that all, يعني the oxygens, the carbon, the two carbons in here, carbon three and four. Will oxygen of or oxygen of this carbonyl, كل ياتهم على نفس the plane, okay? Which makes it perfect for the two oxygens يكونوا برضو كمان على نفس the plane حتى يعملوا أو يكونوا على نفس المسافة من المنجنيز يعملوا interaction معها. What is the kind of interaction that the manganese is forming with the oxygens? لا مش ionic. Collation or a coordination bond, which is very strong, a sort of a covalent bond, okay? طيب لو غيرت انا ال let's say الكربوكسيليك او لو لو عملت ريدكشن للكربوكسيليك اسيد حولتها لالكهول برايكم هل الاكتيفيتي ويل بي ستيل بي ذا سيم ولا لا؟ ليش؟ لا يعني حتى بالالكهول كمان ستيل راح يكون في عندي تو لون بيرز على الاكسجين طيب ال hybridization تماما اختلف okay which means انه هاي ال carboxylic acid if changed to an alcohol صح still بتكون عندي هاي الاكسجين موجودة لكن رح تكون موجودة على sp2 او اسفة sp3 hybridized carbon which means انه it can 
rotate around this bond easily وحتى كمان هاي الأكسجين can rotate easily and let's say can change its angle بحيث إنها ممكن تبعد هلا عن المنجنيز which means you know we will be losing that kind of interaction طيب what about if you hide if you hydrogenate the carbonyl طبعا for sure إذا أنا شلت هاي ال functionalities to begin with أنا بخسر any kind of coordination مع المنجنيز will compound will become inactive هلا فور الكاربونيل او الكيتون لو انا بدي اعمل لها ريدكشن احولها لالكهول سيم ثينج الهايبريدايزيشن اوف ذات كاربون ويل تشينج انتو اس بي 3 معناها انه هاي الكاربون ما راح تكون الجيومتري حواليها بلانر راح تصير وات وات از ذا جيومتري اراوند ان اس بي 3 هايبريدايزد اتوم تتراهيدرال which means انه هاي الاكسجين هلا بتصير يا اما انه pointing down or pointing up ما راح تكون على نفس البلين مع الاكسجين والمنجنيز which means انه if it is to coordinate مع المنجنيز الاذر كاربوكسيليك اسيد راح تبعد او اذا الكاربوكسيليك اسيد راح ليت سي تكون على نفس ال او على مسافه انها تعمل coordination مع المنجنيز الهيدروكسيل in that manner راح تكون ليت سي الجيومتري لها tilted away from the manganese, which means you know, I will be losing one of those coordination bonds. That is why the carboxylic acid will carbonyl, they need to be present as they are. Nothing should be changed. If I changed them, I lost the activity completely. Another very important interaction that this compound forms, which is, let me click on the carboxylic acid. Besides the coordination with the manganese, what is the carboxylic acid is forming to? So I need to do the tilting quiz. Yeah. So this carboxylic acid, besides coordinating with the manganese, لاحظ أنها عاملة interactions مع a residue in here. تعملها شوية تل. أو الأحسن أعمل كليك عليها نفسها ثواني بس هيك واضحة صارت رايت أوكي إف يو ود هاف ذا كورسر أون توب أوف ذيس أمينو أسيد وات دوز إت شو هير أت ذا إند لوك أت ذا بوكس أت ذا إند ويت سيرين أوكي سو ذير إز أ فيري إمبورتنت ريزيديو موجودة عندي بالإنزيم اللي هي السيرين ولاحظوا إنه بتكون عندي الكاربوكسيليك أسيد على مسافة مناسبة منها تعمل معها interaction. What is this kind of interaction? Is it an ionic interaction? السرين, that residue, إيش ال functionality اللي فيها? بالضبط, an alcohol. Are alcohols ionized at physiological pH? لا. All right, PKA لأنهم تقريبا بتوصل 16. They are not ionized. لكن الكاربوكسيليك أسيد Ionized, okay? For the kind of interaction that they are forming with each other, the hydrogen of that serine, or the hydrogen of the hydroxyl group in serine with the carboxylate, that kind of interaction is called an ion-dipole interaction. That's also a very important interaction. لو غيرت الكربوكسيليك أسيد into an amide, برأيكو شو بصير للactivity? بتقل بشكل كبير وممكن تكون diminished. ليش? بالضبط لأنه الأمد الـ PKA لها تقريبا بتوصل 16 which means it will not be ionized which means إن إنه حتى لو بتعمل interaction you need to... آه. بسيط if, even if it needs to أو if it will form interaction مع السرين ما رح يكون هال interaction strong or as strong as the carboxylic acid would form تمام؟ طيب carbon number 2 in here بما إنه بالنوتس عندكم ما بين 2 و 3 في عندي دبل بوند. What is its hybridization? Okay. Carbon number 2, the carbon that is, that is adjacent to the nitrogen. Okay. هلا if you look at your notes, في عندي دبل بوند ما بين carbon 2 و carbon 3. صح؟ Yeah. If you would, oh, there's being or having a double bond, معناها انه carbon number 2, what is its hybridization? والهايبريدايزيشن اوف كاربون 3 برضه كمان اس بي 2 لو انا عملت هيدروجينيشن او ساتوريشن اوف ذات دبل بوند 
ليش طيب؟ بالضبط I will lose or if you would saturate this double bond معناها ال hybridization in here will change into sp3 الجيومتري تماما رح تختلف فرح يتغير عندي ال relative position of the carboxylic acid رح تبعد عن السرين ورح تبعد عن المانجنيز وما رح تعمل interaction ما بيناتهم alright فهوفولي إنه why the carboxylic acid the ketone the double bond اللي موجودة عندي كلياتهم are very important for the activity because their hybridization their geometry is what dictates إنه هاي ال interacting functionalities اللي هي ال oxygens are in the perfect position to interact with the serine and to interact with the manganese okay طب لو غيرت أنا ال ال carboxylic acid with an aldehyde for instance شو رأيكم بتصير للأكتيفيتي؟ بتقل الأكتيفيتي أو almost will be diminished بس ليش؟ بالضبط or is aldehyde ionizable؟ لا alright which means إنه it will not ionize it will not form strong interactions سواء مع السرين أو حتى مع المنجنيز هي كمان كل ما زادت عندي الإلكترون دنسيتي على الكربوكسيليك أسيد كل ما زادت الـ coordination bond strength بينها وبين المنجنيز فأنا إذا بغيرها for instance with an aldehyde with an amid على سبيل المثال أو حتى aldehyde still الـ oxygen راح تعمل coordination مع المنجنيز بس ما راح يكون بقوة الـ coordination اللي ممكن الـ carboxylic acid تعملها أوكي لأنه الـ electron density بتكون كثير أقل مقارنة بـ ionized carboxylate alright أوكي Look at the fluorine in here at carbon number six. If you would click عليها. يعني هي بجوز مش مبينة بها الكريستال ستركتر بس if you would view this crystal structure using another software it will show you انه that fluorine can form interactions مع ال DNA ومع الانزيم which strengthen the potency or binding affinity of this drug. Well, same thing for the piperazine. The piperazine ring also can form interactions with both the DNA and the enzyme. Okay? Time. So again, let's summarize what we have talked about so far. So this part in here is involved in binding to the DNA and DNA gyrase. That is why the, uh, the type of those substituents or the type of those functionalities, the geometry of those uh, substituents or their, these functionalities is very essential as, and very crucial for activity. رح تشوفوا إنه بكل الكينيلونز والفلوروكينيلونز اللي إحنا رح نشوفهم, this part in here is always kept the same. Any change will diminish the activity. Okay? Now, for this carbon in here, رح تشوفوا few analogs ممكن يحطوا عليها let's say substituents in here mostly راح تأثر على ال enzyme substrate complexation فتقريبا بكل ال بمعظم ال analogs اللي إحنا راح نشوفهم with that those that are FDA واللي هم كلهم FDA approved ما في عندي substitution على carbon number two لأنه usually any small substitution ممكن يأثر على ال binding of this drug with the enzyme DNA complex alright now uh, any change with double bond, with ketone, or with carboxylic acid, or in particular, a reduction will for sure inactivate the molecule. Simply, the geometry will change, the electronics around those functionalities will change. So, either that they will no longer chelate with the manganese, or even if they can chelate with the manganese, the chelation will be very difficult. Now, for the substituents on carbon number six. Usually, or what they found out, you know, the best or the optimal substitution on carbon number six, and we call it an fluorine. Okay. Hala, the fluorine ring, يعني mostly, طبعا هي بتزيد من the binding affinity بداخل the active site أو محل ما بترتبط the fluorokinolones أو the kinolones in general. Okay. لكن the very important effect for having a fluorine at carbon number six, إنها زادت من The lipophilicity, 
وبالتالي زادت من الابيليتي اوف ذوز كومباوندز تو بينتريت السيل ممبرينز هلا الفيرست جنريشن كينيلونز سوتش از الناليدكسيك اسيد لانه هالكومباوندز هايلي بولر ف they they have let's say inability to penetrate the cell walls of many strains of bacteria فعشان هيك السبيكترم اوف اكتيفيتي فور ذيم واز ليميتد لكن في حاله let's say when you have a fluorine at position 6 the lipophilicity felicity زادت الابيليتي اوف ذوز فلوروكينيلونز تو بينتريت اوكي through the cell walls and the membranes of bacteria was increased وبالتالي The distribution of those drugs inside the bacterial cells that. Um, I, يعني I'm pretty sure in هم بدلوها with with other let's say uh, halogens such as مثلاً the chlorine and the bromine على سبيل المثال. That بتزيد من lipophilicity even more and more. Um, لكن um, يعني to tell you the truth أنا ما رجعتش على literature أشوف زمان لما عملوا such changes كيف كان الأثر على ال activity but it seems when compared to fluorine the fluorine was optimal أفضل شيء كان the fluorine فعشان هيك بكل the later analogs اللي صنعوهم at carbon number six you will always see a fluorine okay هلا they did try to add other or extra, let's say, halogens at a different positions, such as, for instance, position five, or in some cases, position eight. This did increase the lipophilicity, did increase the in overall, let's say, distribution of the drug inside the bacterial cells, لكن للأسف مع زادت photosensitivity. Okay, for that is why those drugs, even though they had good antibacterial activity, much better spectrum of activity, like in photosensitivity, is what led to either withdrawal of those drugs from the market or in whom may come to or not succeed with clinical trials. We will see examples. Okay. Hala, the substitution in particular on carbon seven, as we will see later on, also can affect the binding affinity with the spectrum of activity. Okay. Hala, as I've mentioned. In no, they besides having the fluorine at position seven, they a six asphe. They also added additional fluorines or even chlorines uh, uh, on other positions such as eight. They ma hakat the the binding affinity cannot it has an penetration through the or into the bacterial cells can afdal. لكن the photosensitivity and the cannot it zid. Examples عليها for instance, the clinafloxacin and cetafloxacin. Okay, besides the fluorine at that position, a chlorine at position eight of those drugs did enhance the activity, like in the same, well, spectrum of activity, like in at the same time, the photosensitivity cannot exceed. Okay, type. Hala, yani, even with having a fluorine alone at position six, but to be con, some patients may suffer from the photosensitivity, some degree of photosensitivity. This can be lowered. That photosensitivity can be lowered if you would attach a methoxy group على carbon number eight, such as in the case of cetafloxacin. Okay. تمام. طيب. نحكي هلا عن position number seven. As I've mentioned, position number seven, the optimal substitution يكون موجود عندي على carbon number seven are heterocyclic rings. That does increase the activity with the spectrum of activity. Okay, the you know, such rings can form interactions inside the binding site. Type. عليها norfloxacin, ciprofloxacin, moxifloxacin. Type. In these drugs, how many ionizable groups do we have? Or do we have ionizable groups to begin with? Well, two, which are the carboxylic acids. Okay, and and nitrogens اللي موجودة in those let's say heterocyclic rings. تمام؟ طيب which nitrogen؟ يعني خليني أرقم هاي one و هاي two. Two. طيب one is it ionizable؟ ليش لا؟ Because the lone pair of electrons is highly withdrawn by this let's say aromatic system. We also don't forget in the fluorine, which is the the most electron negative atom. Will withdraw electrons inductively also. Okay, so approximately high nitrogen will be almost devoid, or the electron density will be very, 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 very small. 
Okay, المoxifloxacin it's this nitrogen that is ionizable with ciprofloxacin it's this one. All right. طيب هلا this means in those fluoroquinolones you see in front of you are بما إنه في عندي two ionizable groups. What do we call a compound that has two ionizable groups uh, that can ionize at physiological pH? Zwitter ionic molecules. راح نحكي later on how this, let's say, or having that other ionizable group, which is considered, by the way, basic or acidic nitrogens اللي موجودة عندي هون بهاي الرنجز. Are they basic or acidic? Basic. Okay, which means in at physiological pH they will bear which uh, what charge? Positive. Yani they will be protonated and they will have a positive charge while this one will have a negative charge. That is why we call them as Witter ions. We're going to talk later on how that helped in increasing, let's say, ال, 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 ال absorption through cell walls. Anyway, I'm going to continue in a minute. What they noticed is that ciprofloxacin had CNS side effects associated with it. Okay? The reason for that, they discovered later, the reason for that in ciprofloxacin can bind to GABA receptors. The modification that was done to alleviate those CNS side effects, a, having a substitution on this nitrogen. I found يعني, a paper which explains why when I add a method on this nitrogen, how it affects me or why it affects me, the binding to the gap or the such compounds or such analogs will have no CNS side effects. Simply because in the GABA receptor, when a quinolone binds, such as a ciprofloxacin, that nitrogen is, let's say, or can fit perfectly in a cavity in the active site where it will have an ionic interaction, okay, with a, an amino acid. If you would add a methyl group here, this means in Rahisir is still ionizable, but um, that methyl will, let's say, have a steric clash with that cavity in the GABA receptor, which means in null affinity or will binding affinity of this in this particular analog will be way much less to GABA receptors versus a ciprofloxacin. Fajan Heka, in all fluxacin, where we have a methyl al peprazine ring relative to the peprazine in ciprofloxacin has a much decreased binding affinity to GABA betali, the incidence of CNS side effects will be very small. Okay? We'll stop here. We'll come back, inshallah, in the next lecture and the rest of the SAR associated with quinolones and fluoroquinolones. Thank you very much, everyone. Are there any questions online? Do you have any questions? يعطيكم ألف 